Hey, what's up? It's Mike with The Daily BM. On this episode, Brad and I discuss gamification of life and how I'm such a piece of shit and an asshole. So hope you enjoy the episode. Remember to like and subscribe, five-star review. If you want to send something in saying I'm not an asshole, that'd be great. So Brad knows that I'm not an asshole. But if not, enjoy the episode and thanks for listening. Hey, good morning, peeps. It's the Daily BM coming to you from the studio on a Monday. I don't even know why I just paused, but I just did. What's going on, Mike? I'm tired. I don't even think you did your normal good morning fuckers. I didn't hear that part. I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. Trying to be more boring. More boring than I already am. Winning. Hey, everybody. Talk about boring. There's nothing more boring than trying to do something that's not gamified. And that's today's topic on this Man Cave Monday. We're going to jump right into it. <laughs> Have you noticed that everything that we do in this day and age is now turned into a game? And there's a reason for that. It's because psychology has shown us that basically we're like hamsters on a fucking wheel. Like as long as it keeps spinning... We'll keep doing it. So when our little app says, hey, great job, you're on a two-day streak, we're going to show up for day three because that's how stupid we are. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> I, I have a feeling that's a direct hit at me because the fitness shit that we do. I don't know why. And then, but <laughs> and then every day it's like, you know, your watch or your phone or your shit is like, congratulations, you stood up. Way to go, fat <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Because it's a game. It's a fucking life's now a fucking game. Like it's not. It's no longer like congratulations. Living. You you stood up. You fat fuck. <laughs> it's no longer living. It's literally a fucking game. Like every time I do something, it's like something or someone has to send me a congratulations on like achieving a skill set. You know, it's like you spend fifteen minutes on the toilet and it's like Instagram goes. Ding! You're our best shit contributor. Congratulations! <laughs> you spent the most time on this location. You know, like shit I mean, contributor. That point. You know, and everything's Wi-Fi and digital. Like you're, everything's connected. Like, have you noticed that? You know, my coffee machine tells me, like, congratulations, you're doing a great job making a cup of coffee today. Hope you enjoy it. It's like, why? Why do I need that in my life? So that way, I'll tell you why. Because it makes me want to do it again the next day, which is what they want. Because that means I buy another pod for a dollar thirty cents a piece. Because <laughs> you spent three dollars Starbucks, but no, I buy a dollar thirty pod and espresso. Because you know the shit at home is supposed to be better. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. It's supposed to be better. Uh, mm. No, you know it's so true. You, know, you you made a really good point there because it is so true. Everything like I laughed when you said "stand up, you fat fuck" because I literally did that three hours ago. And so my watch was like, "It's time to stand." So I stood up at my desk and I was going, "Oh my god, what the fuck am I doing?" I'm listening to my watch to stand up, and it's just so funny that you brought that subject into into play. So you know. I have to, you know, being that we're we came from a generation before the Apple watches and and all that te- this technology and all these things to remind us, you know, I don't remember having like anything like that even on this in any scale of that whatsoever. Um, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it was just you just did shit. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just habit forming, you know, as far as like creating habits. Um now it's like we have to program everything, you know, and it's pretty sad because I actually do that in my phone, too. I have to tell it, hey, remind me to do this when it used to be, hey, I'm going to write this down or I'm going to remember it and put it in my own freaking bank up here. You know, that noggin, that piece of lump of coal that's two feet above your ass, you know, and now it's right. like we don't we rely so heavy on that type of stuff. Like you said, congratulations, you stood up or congratulations, you poured the best cup of coffee in the world. Uh, and you're right. I still don't understand. I, okay, so getting off a little bit, I don't understand why Wi-Fi is on a refrigerator. Why the fuck do I need to know the temperature of my refrigerator? I don't know. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Cool. No. Congratulations. You're maintaining 34 degrees in your freezer. You know what I mean? Or whatever it is, you know, or in your refrigerator. And then in, in your freezer, it's like, you know, three below. Wow. Okay. I, or, hey, your filter is time to change. I don't know. Why don't I just look at the fucking light on it when I walk past it and change the shit? Why do I need it to alert me and say yeah. congratulations for, con- you know, for changing out your water filter on your refrigerator? 
You're so freaking right, dude. It's like yep. everything has to it be Wi Fi no enabled and give you streaks. You're on a five day streak with your air fryer. Hey, <laughs> good job. But I don't know. So I guess what what's the what's the workaround on that? Like, how do you get out of? How do you break those habits? You don't. You just sucked into it. <laughs> you don't. You just sucked into it. <laughs> Well, you just sucked right into it. So you just sucked in. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, moving no, forward. No, because it's habit for you. It gives you a dopamine hit. I mean, in reality, like, there's the only way you can get it, break it is by just being cognizantly aware that you're falling into a game. I mean, if it's it's okay if it's something that is a beneficial habit, you know, such as your fitness app giving you a streak and wanting mm-hmm. you to continue. Um, but like we said in earlier conversations, that can even be detrimental to your health. But you know, it's it's the the bad habits that got has me worried. It's the video games that like, you know, make you check in every day to get your daily rewards. You know, and then right. make you sit there for an hour, two hours to collect, you know, whatever tokens it is or items that you need, and it gives you these little bings and these welcomes. Um, that's what bothers me a little bit because it gets you sucked into it. You know, and social media does it too on some of it. You know, it's like with the content creator and well they're really you know, starting the to do it a lot. That you can get different streaks, you know, like I think on Facebook you can be like the most like on a page you can be like most interacted or something of that nature. Like it rewards you with titles and badges for being present more, which may not be the best thing for you. You know, if you're sitting in front of a computer all day and just staring away, like, is that really the best way to live your life? No, not at all. And, you know, and I agree with you because that, remember the game that we used to play that Star Trek game on a mobile, it was the same way. I mean, it was like, you had to log in every day to get daily rewards and collect, Mm -hmm. you know, different things. So you could do different things. And if you didn't, then you didn't have enough to get things. So it's, it's basically digital addiction is what I like to call Mm -hmm. it. You know, it's a digital addiction. You are literally addicted to getting that stuff so you can continue on when the reality is, is, you know, I know you don't play it anymore. I still play it from time to time, but I don't give a shit about getting that stuff no more. I just kind of go, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I'm bored. I'll log in and take a quick look, you know, but I don't play it every day. I don't do it every day. I've kind of like broke that habit, you know, first of all, because it costs way too much money to play that damn thing uh, for what it is. I mean, they, they got that, yeah. they got that on lockdown as far as how much they charge your ass for it. But, um, Again, it's probably going, you know, to the sheiks over in the, the Arab countries because that's who bought the game, from what I understand. But, um, you know, hey, that's how they can have lions and jaguars and shit, you know, riding around in their cars. <laughs> but, you know, um, so do you have any? Do you have any like genius ways to become consistent at just about anything? You know, when, as far as because I really feel like being consistent can help you break some of those bad habits too. Be intentional. Yeah. Live life with intention. Yeah. No, that's my answer. Oh, <laughs> that's your, <laughs> I was how like, do you, oh. how, how do you, how do you so break live life habit? with intention? You, so like elaborate on that a little bit more. So what do you yeah. mean? Live life with intention. So you have a bad habit. You wake up every morning and you know, you scratch your balls and sniff your hand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Really? That's where you – wait, 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 wait. Before you continue on, you literally went with – you wake up every morning, scratch your balls, and smell it. Yes. That's where you went with this. Say that. Say that. That's, that's a bad – say it's a bad <laughs> habit. I mean, it's something you don't want to do anymore, you know? So I feel like maybe you did that in the past. No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. No. Okay, go ahead. I'm continue. sure there's somebody out there that does it. I was trying to be yeah, – Somebody you – know, somebody. <laughs> Somebody just listened to this show and just woke it, up and going, hmm. It's for comedic results, you know, like, I don't know, or whatever the, it's called. The cheese. Comedic moment, whatever it is. All right, so we'll, all right, we'll go with a so, different topic. Say you wake up every morning and you you, dra- you drag your ass into the kitchen and you make your pot of coffee and you drink your caffeine first thing in the morning. Well, okay. for caffeine first thing in the morning right when you wake up is actually not good for you because you're it doesn't give your body enough time to clear out the... Uh, I think it's androzine that's in your bloodstream. Um, mm-hmm. It's what's responsible for waking you up. So when you drink caffeine, it blocks those receptors um, and prevents that from getting out of your bloodstream. So what happens is that's why you have the afternoon crash if you drink coffee in the morning. If you 
delay caffeine for two to three hours after waking and you allow yourself to wake up naturally and mm -hmm. then you drink caffeine, you'll have a much better response from it. Um, so the way you can break the habits is, is by coming up with a different routine. I mean, that's basically what comes down, replace the habit with something else, you know, instead of getting up and making a cup of coffee, you know, drink a glass of water and make that your new habit. So you're basically habit swapping. You're, you're swapping one habit for another. You know, if you love pop tarts and you know, pop tarts are bad for you, switch over to like legendary brand, you know, hotcakes or hot, how, whatever they're called. Cause at least you're getting more protein and they're slightly better for you. So you're, you're switching out, you know, a bad habit for good habit. If you know every night after dinner that you want to go eat ice cream and sit and watch a movie, go out for a walk to break the cycle. Like, you know, change the environment, you remove the things from the environment, but just live life intentionally. So as opposed to just letting life pass you by, like make an intention and then live by it. If you truly want to break the habit. And that can work. I mean, that that can work for everything. I mean, some things are going to be more difficult than others. But if your why is strong enough, you will break the habit. Um, I'll know, interject. Like someone, yeah, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I, and then you can continue. But I was just going to say, I, you know, I did that with alcohol use. You know, I, mm -hmm. I used to drink, you know, a bourbon every night. I'd have a cigar, you know, about three times a week. And then I said, okay, you know what? I really need to kick that habit because it's a bad habit to be doing it every night because I see friends around me who are doing it like that and how they yeah. has transformed them the way they look. Right. You know what I mean? And I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's just like I can see that they're bloated more. Their skin looks like pale. You know what I mean? Because let's face it, alcohol is poison. Regardless, it's just poison, you know, to the body. Um, that's why, you, you know, your liver has to go into overtime to get rid of it, you know. Um so the minute I stopped that, I noticed a difference in my skin condition. I noticed a difference in, you know, the way I felt. Um, and I really don't crave it. So I just, I, that's yeah. a habit. I, that's a habit I kicked. So you're absolutely right. So you may continue with what you were saying. Yeah. So what I was going to say is like, you know, when you were in your situation, like when you were presented with um, high blood pressure and it kind of gave you like that shock, you know, where you're like, oh shit, this could kill me. You know, so your why became, I don't want to die. So your intention became not to eat salt and sodium um, because you don't want to die. So that your or intention, you know, well, start eating some fucking salt then, bitch. Um, um, so you're talking about so, the high blood pressure? You lost your train of thought. I saw it. <laughs> Well, no, I was trying to think of like another way to like approach it, but I mean that it's see, I'm, I'm difficult with that because that's that's for me. It's it just comes down to intentionality, and I don't know if like if that will work for everyone, but I found that that's what works best for me. Um, figuring out what I want to do and who I want to be, and then doing as many of the things that need to be done to get to that person that I want to be. Um. And I didn't always do that. I mean, there's been years where I've been pretty shitty as an individual as far as meeting my own goals and meeting the dreams and stuff that I wanted to do. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit better in that position now. And it's through intentionality. It's because like every day in this world of got to have it now, we are forced to choose delayed gratification if we want something better in life, you know? like. Mm -hmm. If you want to have money later, you have to save money now, but it's getting more and more challenging because there's more and more stuff being thrown in front of you that makes your life better in your mind. And it could mm -hmm. in reality too. And the problem is you won't know unless you get it. And then there's the rub because now you're sacrificing your future self for your current self and – you know, this is a cycle that keeps repeating. But what about the mindset for like of, of, you know, well, listen, you're not guaranteed tomorrow either. I mean, I exactly. guess everything life is a gamble, just like any type of casino would be. You're gambling. Right. I mean, with life, I mean, you're dealt the cards you're dealt. Some, you, some people get longevity. Some people die young. Some people, so, you know what I mean? So typically when someone asks me that question, here's what here's what I respond to on that. 
Sure. And it's simple. It's, are you happy with where you are now? It's a simple yes or no question. Are you happy with where you are now? Okay. And if the answer is yes, then why are you even considering changing anything? Because if you're happy where you're at, then stay where you're at. Like, I, I think it's an American misnomer that we always have to be advancing and we always have to be improving. Because at the end of the day, like, if you're happy with what you're doing and where you're at in life, then live life and be happy. But if the answer is no, then you're not living with integrity and you're not living with your, um, you know, you're not living to, truthfully to yourself. So change it. What do you need to change? You know, like if, if you want to spend every dollar that you make to live now because you might die tomorrow and you're OK with the fact that when you get old, you're going to have to continue working or you know, up until the day you die, then that's great, you know, but if you're not, then back off a little bit, you know, make the hard decision. Yeah, good points. I mean, here's the thing, like you go like, for instance, like on food, do you want to work hard now and be fit and, you know, have an active, you know, old age if you're lucky enough to live there? Or do you want to eat everything in sight right now and be fat and be unhappy and miserable and die young? But you're happy, but you're kind of happy because you're eating all the stuff you want to eat, you know, like right. you want to pound five Big Macs that might make you happy <laughs> in the moment. But an hour later, you might feel like shit because I know I do. I know what well, I was going to say. Eat. It's a guarantee you're going to feel like shit after eating. You know, I, I know. I know. You know, back in the day when Big Macs were buy one, get one, I'd be like. Fuck yeah, give me two Big Macs. Let's go, you know, <laughs> and pound down two Big Macs. I mean, I'm not going to lie about it. I mean, I, I did yeah, it. I, 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 at one point, I mean, in high school, you I really eat two was Big like Macs? A, you were able to chow down two Big Macs in one sitting? Yeah. I mean, I, well, there was a guy that he was fit and ripped. He was skinny in high school, and we had a challenge, and he ate 10 Big Macs in a row, like back to back. Fuck. When it was when there were, when there were two Big Macs for $2. Remember, they were a dollar a piece. I don't know if you remember that back in 95. Like, I remember asshole. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I here comes the old person. Here comes the old person joke again. The dimension um, shit. I'm not but joking. Basically, Biden. you know, like he was pounding him down. But the thing was, is like he could get away with it because he was working out and he was getting he was doing all the hard work and it was only right. one meal. It wasn't his lifestyle. Correct. And I think that's where, you know, people have the problem too, you know, and is that's the problem I have with the gamified situation is it becomes a a daily have to, which makes it can be counterproductive because then you get you become a slave to it as opposed mm. to it working for you. Um, and like you know, with life, like with diet, like the best diets are the ones that you can live with it. You know, it's the ones that you enjoy eating the foods you eat ninety five percent of the time, and then five percent of the time you you have the stuff that you know is not as healthy, but you still enjoy it. I, I, I okay, so I'm I'm a sidebar here. I've always hated the word diet. Yeah, I like live it better. I, I I just I don't even like I, I just like it's just a it's a just a um a change. It's a change in your eating behaviors because uh -huh. the reality is if you're gonna you're if you're gonna eat junk food, that's all you're gonna eat. You're gonna look like a five hundred pound piece of shit. I mean, I'm sorry, you just will. It's it's inevitable. You're gonna be a heavy fat fuck. Well, but you if don't you, have to be, I mean, you're not necessarily because your five hundred pounds doesn't make you a piece of shit. Like I, well, I, I mean, I'm saying that. if you're okay, so let me let me back up and be a little bit more descriptive. I think that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's if you're eating that like, junk food, then you're going to be fat as hell at some point because it's just you can't your body can't keep up with all that processed food. I don't know very many people right. that can't that are in, that are inactive. Let me put it that way. If you're yeah. active, you can probably get away with some of that a lot. But you know it, what I mean, but I, I guess the, the problem I have with that is it has nothing. Your size, your body type and size does not directly reflect what the type of person you are. No, you can be. A fantastic person. So you're not a fat fucking piece of shit. Well, you know, just because I, you're I, I meant on so that's, I meant, was, I meant I meant body. Maybe that was a little bit extreme. I'm that, saying, so that, yeah, that's really harsh. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far because you can be, you know, it doesn't. It's just because you're overweight doesn't mean you're a shitty person. Like I wasn't I, I, shitty when I was overweight. But were still you a good person? No, I'm just kidding. You know, I, no, I was still a good person. <laughs> I think I was actually a better person than I am now. To be honest with you. Because I cared more about what people thought about me. I, I felt I, like I had more to prove because I didn't feel good in the way I looked. So I was more. Are, are, we, are we being honest here? Are we being like, are we having honest moments? 
whatever you want to do. It's up to you, Bat. It's no, no. I mean, I, I feel I feel that way at times with you. I, I mean, you know that when you um when you were heavier set, you were more jolly and more fun. Yeah. Yep. And then when you when you started losing weight and started getting into shape, you became a lot more um. What's the word? See, I don't want to use the wrong word either because I know you're gonna fucking slam me for it. So I'm trying to figure out what how to say it. Let's fucking go. Uh, um, <laughs> see what I mean? You're ready to go. You're ready I'm to ready. dial I'm it in and keep going. I can dial see you. Hey, you're ready to go on the ready to rock and roll. This shit. No, I, I can just see a difference in, in in the in your personality, um, in the way in your thought yeah. process and things like that. Which I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I can just tell the difference from how you were and then where you are now. So there, it's just a, it's a different. It's a different, not slightly different, Mike, not necessarily yeah. the, the same guy you were, you know, but we, you know, but I think as we grow older and as we become more wise or, or you, we hope we become more wise, sometimes I'm not that wise, but I think that you start to change anyway. Because I mean, I'm not the same person I was when I was 40. I'm not the same person I was when I was 30. As each decade passes, you're def you're definitely changing and evolving. You know what I mean? Into what right. you're going to become until you are finally in a pine box or in, you know, your case, a, a jar. So, cause I think you're going to do the cremation thing, but no, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Launch it. Up space. To I'm a, Spot. I don't, I don't care. Search for, Mike, to search for Mike. <laughs> fucking just throw me in a ditch. I don't give a fuck. I'm dead. <laughs> throw me in a ditch. Really? Throw you in the Everglades. Let the gators have at you. Hey man, go ahead, yeah. dude. <laughs> knock, 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 knock yourself out. Um, I mean, uh, see, here's the funny part. You know, you said you think I was more jolly when I was fat. The honest was that I was in a lot more pain and I was a lot more broken. And it was just all a facade. It was a fake. It was a deep, a deep fake. So that way people wouldn't be able to like really see what was going on deep down inside. But was that just your pain from deep down inside? Or was that was or is that really not you at all? And what I mean by that is what the the caring and the gener and the jolly and the fun Mike, is that really not you? Is if that was all a facade, then that's I mean shit, dude. You put on a hell of a facade. Yeah. I know. Pretty good, huh? Not yeah, real Welcome good. To me version two point oh. Oh um, Jesus Christ, here we go. <laughs> LFG. I'm I s okay, so I have a little bit of issue with your statement because I'm still caring. I still care. Well, elaborate. That's why we're having a talk. People. Right. Um, how do you, well, so how do you feel I don't care? Um, I, I guess from the outside looking in, it's like you, you say you care, but I can see the difference of compassion. You used to have more compassion for things and others and things like that. And you don't have that anymore. You're a lot more cutthroat. Fair enough. I mean, I'm just trying to put it in layman's terms. I, I mean, I, it's hard to pinpoint exactly. Yeah, I'm trying what... to think. Of, I'm trying to think of an example where I was like that. I mean, it's more like, I guess the reality is I've developed more like a attitude of I don't need other people to be happy. Whereas in the past, I felt like I really had to have other people to be happy, and I've realized that I'm happy with myself. So therefore, you know. If the situation's not working for me, then I'm okay with letting the situation go. Yeah, but you're, I, I, that's not what I mean. Because, I mean, I get that. You oh, have I'm to have self-love and you have to have, you know, yeah, love yourself that's first. And then, but, I mean, it, it, that's my whole thing. I mean, yeah, you always have to know when to say, okay, you know, enough's enough and, and cut somebody yeah. out. I get that because I've always been that way too. I was, I, I would cut you right out. I didn't give a shit. You know what I mean? That's just the way I was. I feel, and again, this is just per, just from the outside looking in, that you were more, and I don't want to make this just a pick on mic session either. So this is what it sounds oh, okay. like. I'm, I'm enjoying but, it. That, this is fun. But, 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 like, but, but it, like it comes across know. like you come across like just like very, there's almost like, okay, so let's say there's black and there's white and there's shades of gray, right? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like that shade of gray is getting like this. It's getting smaller and smaller. And if any, I, I know people can't see me, but basically I'm taking my hands and moving them inward. So it's almost like that shade of gray is narrowed and it's very black and white. So it's either, yeah, I mean, I, I know what you're going to say. Well, it's wrong or right or yes or no. I mean, it's ones and zeros. I get it. But no, there was a lot of, there was a lot of play I, in there with you in that, in that gray zone and your gray zone over the, probably the last, I don't know, year has gone 
complete get out of here what are you doing sorry man my cat came in here and started fucking with me but um mike always plays with me when he comes over here fuck off leave him alone but um but uh yeah it's 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 one of those things where i felt like your gray area has gotten smaller and don't don't get me wrong i'm the same way i feel like my gray area has gotten a lot smaller i used to have a big ass gray area very little uh, black and white. it's not gotten smaller i just realized as I've gotten older, that there's two types of people. And there's several different ways you can express this, but the way I'm going to express it right now is there's two types of people. There's people that are sales, and there's people that are anchors. And if you get too many anchors, you're not moving. And you want as many sales with you as you can. People that pull you forward, help you go, get you where you need to go. Like, that's the kind of people you want to be around. So, I'm becoming more aware of the differences in people hmm. and i need if i'm going to make an impact the way in my life i need to make sure i have more people that are sales than anchors you know mm -hmm. there's people that fill your cup and there's people that drain your cup mm -hmm. and if you have too many people draining your cup there'll be nothing left for you so you need to find people that fill your cup and you need to cut out people that drain your cup. So same expression, just different different metaphors for the same principle of like, I've become more aware that there's more people in the past draining my cup than filling my cup. And it's imperative that I don't allow that to happen anymore. You know? Mm. Um, well and I, I can't live in the moment of... You know, being fake happy. And it was more like depression and stuff like that um, than anything else. Like, it was like Robin Williams, you know? Like, everybody thought he was the jolliest planet, person on the planet. And he committed suicide because he was utterly depressed inside. So it was more like that. Like, I'm still – I'm happier now than I was then, by far, internally. Maybe I'm not as jovial or jokey or jolly. It's mostly because I'm not trying to deflect. Mm -hmm. You know? Like – I'm just being present and listening and being active. I mean, and you know, like being being in the in the area, not not necessarily being like a jokester. Plus, I I don't know, man. I'm matured, so the stuff that I used to find funny is not as funny mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and I've taken more of a bigger picture. Like something that bothers me a lot is the uh, exploitation of children on social media. Mm -hmm. It's just. And what I mean by that is just the parents that take their kids and they show their kids doing something stupid or dumb or cussing or being an idiot, you know, and the video goes viral. And then now this video could literally haunt that child for the rest of their lives or the people that are trying to profit off their children on Instagram and TikTok, you know, like making them do things and ha having them in situations. I, I, it's no different than beauty pageants. Like I'm not a big fan of beauty pageants because yeah, I've never I had been feel either. like. I feel like those type of things, you know, can be detrimental to a child's development. And especially in social media, because it's like you can never escape it. You know, like once you're once you're a meme, you're always a meme. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you it know? never goes like, away. Look at Kevin. Or look at uh, Kevin James. You know, what I mean, he's got that yeah. one meme that goes around with him, his hands in his pockets with that little smirk. It's still yeah. circulating around to these day. Yeah. You know, so like it bothers me because I don't, I, I you know, I, I used to find that kind of shit funny, but now I don't. Like it was like that moment, like back in the day, you know, like when Napster came out and we were downloading songs and we were like, this shit's cool. And then one day I realized that like, no, this shit isn't cool because like we're stealing from artists and like it's jacking up the prices, you know, and it's, it's not. It's not cool to steal, no matter how big or how small it is, whether it hurts somebody or doesn't. Like, there is a ramification down the road somewhere for it. You 100%. know, you know some, you know, somebody's not getting what they should get for what they did. Like, you know, it's, it, it's, it, you're absolutely right because, you know, it, it was funny because you actually are the one that pulled me out of doing that. Yeah. Um, years ago, you were like, Man, you know, I really and it struck home because I remember I was like, man, I got this freaking thing. I forget what it was. We were sitting somewhere, yeah. and I said, man, I, I got this thing about it. 
No, you weren't a dick about it at all. You were like, uh, yeah, man, I feel bad because, you know, those those people in the, the movie production companies have to – it was about a movie yeah. or something. I was talking about movies, how I downloaded movies, and you're like, yeah, I don't do that anymore because – you know, the, the, the movie grips and the people that are doing the grunt work have to get paid, you know, and da 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 yeah. And the movie studios, you know, they're making, not making any money and they can't pay those people and blah, blah, blah. And I, and I started thinking, yeah. I was like, damn, I feel like a dick. You know what I mean? I really yeah. did. I felt I mean, like a dick. You know, it's not about it's not about the actor or the actress that's in the movie because they'll be fine. I mean, they got tons of money. It's about yeah. all the support people yep. that are doing all the support jobs for that, 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 that depend on that as a daily living, you know, not – not the people that are making the millions and billions of dollars. You know, like if you download Taylor Swift's song, it's it's probably uh, for free. It's probably not going to impact her dramatically, but it could impact all the people that have worked at her record label, or all the people that you know that are produced, on tour, or all the people yeah. that are on tour with her, and all the stuff like that. Like it, and it's not like here's the thing. Everybody's like, well, it's just me. But the problem is, is when you compound it by eight not billion people, it's not just you. You know what nah, I mean? Then it becomes a that's lot more than that. Problem. Yeah, you know, you're you're it, absolutely right. It's a lot more you know, than just you. <laughs> I mean, basically, you know, if it's like, you know, if, if we all drink and finish a 16 ounce glass or bottle of plastic bottle of water on the planet all at the same time, that's eight billion plastic water bottles that get thrown into the garbage landfill all at the same time. Or float in the ocean somewhere. Ha- and if that happens every single day, eventually there's not enough space to put it. Yep. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just little things like that. And like when you start thinking about it in the bigger picture, it's like, holy shit, you know, my little, it's not my little change that's going to make a difference. It's if ever, more people do the same things over and over again, like make the changes, you know, like that's what's going to make the global impact for all the stuff that we need to do. Um, and as we step up as a society, but I don't know. I mean, it's been a trying time since COVID. Uh, yep. You know, it's every every day I wake up, there's more negativity in the world than there is positivity. And I try to shelter myself as much as possible. That's why I'm not really on social media. That's why I don't really engage in that stuff, because I don't like going into the comments and people making rude comments just for shits and giggles. Yep. On that. And that's, on what they, and that's exactly I mean, what they do. You know, I mean, it's not. Yeah, we all used to do it on the in the schoolyard. And we do it to our buddies, you know, but it's one thing to like be with your group of friends and joke around. It's another thing to be on a platform for billions of people to see it. Yeah, I agree. It's totally different. Like if you're in, if you're sitting there in your friend's living room and you're watching shit, you know, and you're saying some racist shit because you think it's fucking funny. So what? But now if you go online and you start spewing racist shit, then it's a problem, a bigger problem. Okay, because it's no longer funny. Yeah, you and your little cl- clowns might think it's funny, but other people the are going to get super. Picture is, yeah. mm-hmm. it, is it not funny? You know, because it's not in context. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have a friend and you that's, you know, black, and you guys share black jokes, it's okay. It's funny because you're both laughing, and you know that both both of you know where your heart is. Your intention is not real. But if you just spew it on the internet, nobody knows what your heart is. Or your intention. They don't know you. You're just a fucking numbers and name. You know. Yeah, true. And it comes across as hatred. So, um, it's uh, that's what bothers me. You know, and it's I think that's the problem. And then you know, and now we're gamifying everything, so you get we get rewarded for, you know, stuff like I mean I've seen shit like. You send gifts like, you know, on fucking Instagram and shit like that. And it's a game like you're you're literally wasting money. You're sending somebody money for performing. Yeah. It's no different than walking into like, you know, a Barnum and Bailey tent and putting money in a slot machine to watch an exotic, you know, not exotic, but a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a curiosity, you know, one of the deformities behind the screen you're like oh whoa look at that that's crazy you're putting your money in there and you're wasting money you're wasting your money that you could be using for something better and then they're getting paid you know to do something that we should really probably try to get away from in society well said agree i was reading an article today like on a side note you know it's a little bit towards gamifying but not it's like we have the highest it's like male virginity into adolescent or adulthood is at like an all-time high and it's attributed to mostly porn because guys can quickly get a dopamine hit 
by watching porn and get satisfaction without any chance of rejection. Yeah. They can get exactly what they want. They can watch exactly what they want to watch, see exactly how they want to see it. And there's no chance of rejection. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas with, when you're with a woman or, you know, you have to approach them, you can get rejected. You have to talk to them in the bedroom. You have to tell them what you want to do sexually at any point, get rejected. And then you have to perform. And there may be a probability, there might be a possibility that you don't perform well, and then you get rejection then. So there's a lot of steps where shit can go wrong, but with porn, all of that's alleviated. Correct. So it's a huge, I mean, it's a huge problem that we have that, you know, we're getting, everything's getting gamified. And it's like, it's going to get worse as VR gets better. Like the more virtual reality we get and the more interface we get, it's going to get worse before it gets better as far as like maintaining our sovereignty and our independence from our systems and our games, you know, like I find myself getting addicted to my watch on stats and numbers and stuff like this. And I could feel perfectly fine in the morning, waking up. Like I got a good night's sleep, look at my phone and it, it tells me, Hey man, you didn't get a good night's sleep. And immediately I feel like shit. Yep. Cause it told me I got a, I didn't get a good night's sleep. And I'm like, Oh no. And I, now I feel like shit. Cause I, you know, I didn't get a good night's sleep. It told me I didn't get a good night's sleep. But in reality, I like I was sat back and I was like, I was literally fine five minutes ago before I looked at this thing. Like I felt yeah, great. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I didn't like, even wear mine last night. I put mine on the charger. Yeah. I just took it off. I was like, I did the same thing. I was like, man, I'm gonna take this off because I mean shit, I'm relying way too much on it. <laughs> um, you know, so it's interesting to watch, but it's also like, okay, do I really need all this? Like, is it really making my life that much better or is it making it worse? Is it information overload? Am I analyzing everything too much now? Is everything too much of a game? Like life's right. not life shouldn't be a game. You know, it's life's a journey, a journey. not like an adventure. That's an adventure. Yep. It should be an adventure. Like you you should live life for the fun of it. You should do things that are fun and enjoyable, not because you're trying to win, you know, a badge, you know, or well said. a trinket. Um so I don't know. I don't think it's going anywhere because it's great advertising. It's great for advertising, it's great for you know, creating an addiction. Because you're getting a dopamine hit, because that's what it's doing. It's flooding your right. system with dopamine. And then within a couple hours, you're feeling shit. So you have to log back into your game and try to get your next dopamine hit from hitting that next achievement um, or whatever it is. So it can be a vicious cycle where you're, you know, you're either super happy or you feel like super shit. I don't think people know how to feel like normal anymore. So, well said, man. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not going to follow that up. I, think, that. I, I, I think we're going to end on that note. I think that's a great. Yeah great ending man right there guys i'm not even gonna continue to be an asshole because i like being an asshole yes so as mike's yawning and being an asshole we'll just go ahead and just cut on out of here um don't forget to head over to the dailybm.com where you can find all our socials don't forget also as well mason danger beard co.com you get 20 percent off by using the daily or just using daily bm promo code at the at checkout and you get 20 percent off uh mikey you got any last words or you want to just finish on that note fuck you And there you have it. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great one. Have a good one. Deuces.